Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Exactitude from CCT Suzanne McNeil. Uh, let's see, this is a recent, I mean, this is from, uh, from a while ago. Uh, it was in uh, some one of uh, uh, Suzanne's books. And, um, and uh, Linda from Tangle Patterns has been putting them up on uh, on her site. And, oh, this is the most recent one. Okay. All right. So it is a grid pattern. Um, you know, I'm going to essentially do a four square, but this grid is done a little bit differently, whereby, let's see. Actually, I was finding, I'm going to do the edges first, because what we're going to do is um, a double grid line. And so what I did um, on, cause I, you know, I always do my own version of the step out. And um, so I kind of separated this because I don't know, it, 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 my style is always to assume that I'm, that, that uh, everybody looking at it, it, it's new to them. So I, you know, I don't want to make any assumptions. And so I, I divided this out just, you know, so if you, you know, have a challenge, uh, you know, do take a look at my version as well. And then there were some other places where I wanted to separate uh, some of the stuff out. So that way you know how to get there easily without having to really look too hard. All right. So we have these. Ni look at how nice that is. Woo. I talk and don't think that is the key. <laughs> um, well, and what I, the reason I'm starting at the edge instead of starting at the middle, like I normally do is this way I can kind of, I can gauge between, um, you know, this line and what will be up here and then kind of, kind of sort of find the middle a little bit better. But as you know, it just doesn't matter. All right. And then, you know, you do one line and say, okay, which side is bigger? Oh, it's pretty close. <laughs> All right. There we go. Look at how neat that is. Now we have done this actually fairly recently where we've had a double grid and one of them. No, I, I remember saying, and I, I, I don't, the name is escaping me. Um, but it, it, it was one of those where it was like, oh, almost looked like she had a specific way of doing it. But, you know, I think in the end, it probably, again, still doesn't matter. All right. Then once you have this in the center of each box, we're going to put an orb. Um, and you know what? And it's up to you because honestly, really from this point, well, let, let me take that back. Um, no, it doesn't matter, you know, whatever size orb you want, because what Suzanne did is she, she, you know, has what we're going to do here. And then she shows a couple variation ideas because it's like, you can have the orb and then really this next step, um, which is to, from the sides of the orb. So however big you want to draw these is fine. Just from the outside, we're going to, um, make a straight line to the corner and like that could yeah I sure this is the way I usually do it I kind of go diagonal and then flip the tile and this way you know you kind of going on the sides like that ever so carefully then um yeah, then this, this line then is, uh, matches up with however, um, you know, however thick as you can see. So you can have a lot of fun with that, but it seems like, like her variations and it would make sense. Um, you know, the, you know, playing with it is kind of after this part, however you want to decorate it. All right. I think my biggest challenge with this, and I'm, I'm, I'm almost holding my breath, but not really. 
if I was holding my breath, then I wouldn't be able to talk, right? <laughs> um, uh, it, just to make sure that that these lines coming from the orb, it, you know, are you know a little offset of the corner. So going slow, it helps. So that way you can do that. And then also, yeah, if they end up a little bit, you know, um, off, it's, it's not going to matter in the end. It really is not. Oh, I have one more. Um, because you can decorate it in such a manner that it might cover up whatever you wish it to. Okay. So we have this. Then... I decided on, on my version is to do the, the decorating and we'll do this the way, um, you know, she has it. And like I said, you can play and what, and I think it looks, I think it looks rather neat. Um, and that is essentially we're aura -ing in each of these triangles, you know, and you can decide, you know, what distance and just really, I mean, putting two, well, it depends on how big yours is, how much space you have. I'm able to fit two nicely. And we just go around and do that. And what's nice about this, like a lot of a lot of uh, tangles, and, and honestly, it is the way a tangle should be. <laughs> um, you know, like one of the criteria of, you know, what makes something a tangle versus uh, a how to draw, you know, whatever it is. And a lot of it is the repetition. Now, there are some, of course, that, you know, well, it just, it, it just depends on the tangle. There are some that kind of, uh, I mean, they're, they're neat to do. They're not necessarily a how to draw a cat. Um, but don't necessarily have this level, you know, of, of repetition. And I, I, I you know, it's, I think it's nice to have a good combination of both in your... Um, uh, your repertoire of of tangles because this is you know it's such a nice fill in and then too like there are well I think when I get under stress well they actually well the, the, my my favorite tangle um, is like that where it you know it's a grid based it's really pretty but it it's it's repetitive because you're putting the same thing in every box and um, it's just this is what we need when we're when we're stressed and we want to de-stress, decompress, do whatever it is that you need, <laughs> you know, or whether it's uh, meditating. These are the perfect tangles to do that. All right, I got them all. Yes, yay! And you know what? It looks rather neat just that way. Um, let's see, what did I do? Okay, I did this, and then I decided in the last, because I only wanted it to, I wanted to keep it to six six boxes there. Um, but then y you can fill in however you want, if you were just to do it this way. I did like the idea of filling in these little box intersections. And one thing, too, is if, if there's a place where you're like, oh, I didn't like how that turned out. Then look and see maybe we could filling in that uh, that piece or something around it. Like if these lines are a little goofy, I don't know. I was doing pretty good here. Wow. Um. Some days everything just aligns right <laughs> in the pen. Well, really, in the pen is just you know is behaving behaving well. All right. You know, and adding just, even if it was just that. And then you could do some, some shading. Um, I also liked filling in. We'll leave a little opening there. A lot of times I do like that, so that way I'm assured to get a little opening. And then you can always adjust it as, well, about this. Oh, there we got one in. <laughs> you know, that works. And then, and I think I'll do... I'll do like I did on my version. Do I have a okay? I packed that away. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the ten because it's the fattest pen that I have handy. Um, and this is kind of fun. Well, 
here's here's another thought. Well, I, I you know I still could fill in the the big X, and then it, it would just have a little shine in the middle. But I th partly think that that would look silly, so I'm not going to do that. But what I am going to do is let's start with filling in this part of the X, or I mean, yeah, well, the aura of the X. something like this sometimes it's like if you especially if you don't know what to do this is my thought process if I don't know what to do exactly I will stay with one box and then alternate over here so that way it's like I meant it even if even if maybe I didn't care for something but then in the other the alternate boxes I can do something else and then too if you're a person that likes variety that is a nice way to have that happen oh I have another thought too maybe I'll maybe I'll do it but I think I'm gonna wait. The, the, these little, um, the little uh, inside ones are kind of nice to do too. And I'm thinking I might do that. We shall see. And then, like I said, I do the same on the diagonal. I think I'm gonna have to tidy some of that up because this is, at like least, it's a fat, fat. It's a way thicker pen but unlike the graphic one I mean it's just this and that's it the graphic one kind of comes to a point but it's not as loose as a um like a brush pen so I like and I like that it's it, the brush pens seem to be um and I'll say I, I've used them only a couple times I think they come to a way finer point um but like I said, they're just a little bit more, well, they're brush-like. <laughs> I'm good with, I'm okay with pens. I don't, you know, brushes, I'm, I'm working up to those. You know, when you're, you know, the, the non-artist thing, it's like I'm not, you know, I'm going to use what I'm comfortable with. And it's nice that we have a lot of varieties like this. And then if you go outside a little bit, you can just trace over that edge and see how it kind of smooths out those bumps. Okay, so then on the opposite side, I'm going to do maybe, so if I don't want to do this one, and I did this on, I did this on my sample and I really liked it, but I did, you know, this for sure. You know, I think I still might come in back and do the other. I don't know. It does feel like I should do that big X when I do this. Because then it's like it's alternating. But at the same time, it just doesn't matter. We do what we want. <laughs> Could even uh, use uh, the graphite with those, too. And I think I'm going to do that on, on the big, the big grid, just because I like the way it looked on my, on my step out. Yeah, look at, if I just did two lines, I don't have to do this stuff. I don't know why I do that. It's, that's it's such a, it could cause other problems kind of thing. All right, did I hit them? I just need to neaten them up. Okay. Yeah, and then that one went a little over. All right. I don't know. I think I'll leave it like that. I kind of like it. And not worry about... I feel like I'm missing. I think it's just because these seem so different. But let's do what I mentioned. 
And that is, I'm just going to put graphite in these, in the original grid line. Now, I could have gone and done, you know, the little partials of that, but... I, I kind of like it just this way. <laughs> All right, and then we'll use the tortillon to smooth it out. And that's why if you, you know, if you don't want it to be real dark gray, you can just put a little squiggle of the graphite in there and it just, it smooths it all out real nice. But you can control how gray by how much graphite you put in there. Then two, yeah, I mean, keep in mind that it's it's packing up with graphite as you go so it might naturally get a little bit thicker it's neat yeah and so not not really shading shading where it gives it dimension but it's interesting you know too I could just because I want to and I'm going to well, well I'm gonna do this while I tell you about some stuff I'm just gonna put some straight lines in here could put orbs all the way through there that's a that'd be a neat contrast just putting orbs in It'll, you know have like a it'll be like a string of little little pearls going through there that way it gives it a little something it makes it makes me me yeah, definitely makes me a little happier. All right, so if you are enjoying this, and I hope you are, um, please click on the like button. You need a hand. You need to stretch your hands anyway, right? So click on the like button. And if you've not subscribed yet to the channel, would love to have you be a subscriber. Um, in the description section, I mentioned uh, the step outs, so that's where you will find those. Um. So my version, my version, and then uh, a link to Suzanne's, which is essentially two tangle patterns. And, you know, let me give a quick shout out to Linda and two tangle patterns. She does such a fantastic job of uh, delivering. Uh, and I want to say it's five days a week. You get, a, you know, a different tangle in your email if you, you know, uh, subscribe to her. And... Oh, see, that looks neat. <laughs> like it. Um, and then she just kind of like a recap. You get an email basically, I think, every day from her. And um, I think maybe one is some kind of a recap and a tangle refresher. She has some things that she does kind of on the weekends. But it's just, it's such a wonderful resource. You can also, if you, when you go there, if, you've, if you're not familiar, do take a look around. She has, like I said, tons of information. Um, but if you like it and you want to support her as you kind of scroll down, actually this on my screen, it depends on what you're looking at. Um, just to the right, lower right of the step out, it says, get the current edition. So she puts out a guide every year and it has the little thumbnail pictures, you know, it looked like this and, and it's a PDF. And it, you know, it helps because it's, I mean, I know it takes a lot of time and it's costly to, to maintain stuff like this. And, um, you know, so it, that supports her and, uh, it also is an excellent resource for you. So, um, if you, on the PDF version, you can click on, on the, you know, the thumbnail and it'll take you, you know, as long as you're, you know, on the internet, it'll take you to that, uh, that step out. So it's really, really handy. Uh, versus you having to go there and then, you know, click and search and scroll and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I, every once in a while, I like to make sure to to, um, to highlight Tangle Patterns and Linda Farmer because just because of that. Um, so below the step out links, uh, there are there's a my link tree where you can follow me. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, so it has links to all of my social media. Um my brain just stopped, you know, and let me, it stopped because I, I should highlight right now. Um, if you're on Facebook, of course, follow my page. Uh, but if you'd like to be a part of a, of a community of Tanglers, we would love to have you join us. So we have our, the Tangle Addicts community group. Uh, there are four questions to answer. Once you click on that, there's four questions to, 
to answer in order to gain entry. I, I pretty much explain, you know, the, and, and set the tone for the, the group and the expectations and things like that. Because I hate it when I, you know, I go to a page that says, will you follow all the rules? It's like, well, I don't know what they are yet. So <laughs> I, I've kind of developed these over time um, just because of that. And that's, that's, they're pretty much the crux of everything. And, um, and that way, you know, but uh, just want to let you know about that. Also, I do classes. If you want to tangle with people from all over online, come and join us. I have a lot of them that are free and then some that have a, have a fee. Uh, and you can also buy, you know, if you see something that you like, and that's on my website under the classes, uh, it's in the big menu and you will see that. And, um, oh, something's going on outside. <laughs> um, uh, so you'll see that and, um, you know, the, the types of classes, but look for the tangle time. It's on Thursdays. I do two sessions, uh, completely free and lots of fun. So come and join us. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I wish you happy tangling.